This is the brand new BF Goodridge All-Train KO3 and this is the brand new Falcon Wild Peak 84W and in this video I will of course be testing them against each other both on road and of course off-road. There is already quite a lot of good technical videos on YouTube explaining the differences without actually testing so I'm not going to go too deep into it but let's just touch upon the new tyres briefly. The KO3, well it's been 10 years, I think about 10 years since the KO2 was launched, so quite a long time. And the KO3 has gone for this radical new tread pattern with full block length 3D sipe. So that's a big step forward and I think that's something they'll be looking to improve snow performance for, even though the KO2 was already one of the best in the snow. BF Goodridge say the new KO3 has evolved with the modern off-roader. That is, they've improved wear, they've improved gravel road durability and they've improved snow traction while retaining the soft mud capabilities of the previous tyre which was class leading. BF Goodridge also say thanks to their Baja racing experience, the KO3 sidewall is even tougher than the KO2 and I believe the KO2 was probably one of the toughest in the segment. So this tyre, I mean it looks like it's taken everything the KO2 was and just made it better for modern times. Falcon, on the other hand, well, the 83W was already one of the best tyres in this segment. You're probably looking at this thinking, how can they improve the 83W? Well, the 84W is more an evolution rather than a revolution. They have gone with a slightly more aggressive tread design with a, a bit more on the sidewall. So that's something to really focus on with this tyre. Like it just looks more aggressive. Again, like the BF Goodreads, they've updated the compound to give it better wear performance and it should improve the comfort on the road. The 84W also comes in more sizes than the 83W and there's HD heavy duty options if you tow a lot. It should have dramatically better wear while towing. So how am I testing this? Obviously both the tires are in the same size. They're both 275, 65, 18, which is about as big as I can get on my Porsche Cayenne. They're both fitted to these Mantra wheels. Now these Mantra wheels are a proper off-road wheel and they're fully forged. These only weigh around 27 pounds a wheel, which I really appreciate right now, because obviously I'm gonna be changing the wheels and tires in the, in the desert. It's about 100 degrees in Fahrenheit, well into the 30s in centigrade, I'm melting. I do have some geek stats about the tires. I'll put them on screen and I'm gonna to have to read them because there's no way I'm remembering them in this heat. Now, they both, both the tires weigh about the same. In this size, the BF Goodridge is slightly heavier at 57.8 pounds versus 56.2 pounds for the Falcon. The Falcon does have a higher starting tread depth with over one millimeter more, 13.5 on average compared to 12.2. And that's probably reflected in the tread life guarantees. This is 60,000 miles and the BFG is 50,000 miles. That's still a long time, but 60,000 miles is obviously more. And in this case, more is better. The Falcon has a slightly smaller overall mounted diameter at about 31.5 inches whereas the BF Goodridge is 31 and 7 8 inches. So it is a slightly larger tire, but I had a set of Nokia and Outpost NATs on this previously, and they're even bigger. So neither of them are massive tires for their size. Both tires are of course, three peaks severe snow rated, uh, but I won't be doing any snow testing today. Subscribe for that hopefully in the future. And if anyone cares, the BF Goodridge is made in the USA, which I think is a, a bonus, especially if you're an American viewer. Now, the only thing really left to talk about is the looks of the two tires. And, that is hugely subjective. I think personally, I think I prefer the tread pattern of the Falcon. It's a more traditional all-terrain, aggressive all-terrain tread pattern. The BF Goodridge has gone for these longer, wider blocks, and I'm sure there's excellent engineering behind it, but I think the Falcon just looks a bit more traditional. It looks a bit better seated on the vehicle, but that's my opinion. But then the sidewall of the KO3 is slightly less aggressive than the Falcon 84W, but it's a little bit, simpler as well so I think for me that's a bonus but again this is hugely subjective one thing the BF Goodrich does have that the Falcon doesn't have in this size is the BF Goodrich does have a white sidewall option so white sidewalls in my mind always win but for interest of fairness in comparison obviously I've mounted the black sidewall out the white sidewalls on the inside I'm going to be testing on road and off-road as I said in the intro so let's get on with the testing right how are these tires off-road? These are the two aggressive all-terrain tires. They're gonna spend at least some of their life off-road, I hope, unless you're buying them for looks, and then you might as well end the video here. Now, a few caveats. This is a subjective test. You're used to me doing objective testing where I'm measuring lap times and things like that. There's only a few places in the world you can do objective off-road testing, and this is not one of them. However, I've been doing this job for long enough now that my subjective ratings are almost never not in line with the objective rating. So what I'm about to tell you, I'm fairly confident in, and I think it's probably better than anyone else has ever told you. So where I am in Utah, I've had the opportunity to test quite a lot of services. There's no rock, 
interestingly rock grip pretty is pretty much in line with dry grip and we'll talk about that later in the video but i have done a lot of gravel road which is i think where most of these tires spend their time i've done a little bit of like gravelly rocky sandy hill climbing i've done some sand dunes i've done a variety of surfaces and there's actually quite an interesting distinction between the two products, at least what I'm finding in these conditions in this vehicle. The BF Goodridge seems to be geared up for traction and braking more than the Falcon. So when you're braking, you just get a little bit of extra bite initially, especially on gravel. Sand, you know, sand is really hit and miss. Like I, I don't want to say one is better than the other on sand because they're both excellent for what their segments are, um, but they're not sand tires or they're not MT tires. However, uh, the BF Goodridge does seem to have a little bit more traction and braking ability. The Falcon, on the other hand, does bite a little bit more as you're turning. So if you're going into a turn corner on a loose surface, you can just expect the Falcon to react a little bit more quickly and a little bit more willingly, which I like. But then once turning, again, both the tires have quite different characteristics. The Falcon is very sharp on the front end and the rear can start to wander a little bit, but it seems to dig in and like catch itself very nicely. And it feels like quite a balanced product. The BFG doesn't quite have that front axle bite on initial turning, but that means once you're turning, the rear does feel a little bit more stable. Sorry if this is quite vibrating. I do have off-road coilovers on this, but it's still pretty rough surface. Now the BF Goodridge, when you're off-road, obviously the road isn't smooth as you'll see, we vibrate about. The BF Goodridge has a slight disadvantage mid-corner on loose surface, because if you hit a, what I would call like a, an undulation or a bump that destabilizes the car, then the BF Goodridge can start to slide out. It does, it just takes slightly longer to recover. The Falcon just bites in a little bit more. So what you're getting is two very good tires with what I believe are two ever so slightly different design philosophies. And it seems like BF Goodridge have decided traction and braking, this is gonna be our thing. And it, it, this is reflected on sand uphill as well. Like you can feel it dig in a little bit more. And then Falcon have decided, you know what, we're gonna have a slightly more rounded product, maybe give up a little bit of that traction and braking ability of the BF Goodridge, but we want our tires to be sharp on the front end off-road as well. So, you know, I think that's quite fascinating. And let me just clarify now, the differences I'm talking about are very, very, very slight. They are both outstanding on pretty much all the surfaces I've tested on today, but they are the differences I found. Now, as these are, although they are aggressive all-terrain tires, they're gonna spend at least 50% of their life on road. So I think on road is just as important. So that is gonna be the next set of testing. Do you really wanna get into off-roading but don't know where to go? That's where this video sponsor, Onyx Off-Road, really helps. Think of Onyx Off-Road as Google Maps built by off-road enthusiasts for off-road enthusiasts. So when you open it up, you have a very familiar view of a satellite of the local area. However, you have all the possible trails overlaid. A lot of these trails have also been created by an Onyx trail guide. That means the trails have been traversed, they've been checked out, they've been rated, there's pictures, there's descriptions, everything you want to know about the trail before you get there. And one of my favorite things about it is it tells you how wide the trail is. So that means, is it suitable for a big SUV like this or is it only suitable for side-by-sides and motorbikes? Also, if you have an Onyx Elite membership, you get extra perks such as public and private road information, which is super important about staying on the right-hand side of the law, and you get loads of other perks. So be sure to check out Onyx Off-Road. They are linked in the description. I really genuinely think they're a really great app and I do use it all the time. So thank you very much for the sponsorship. Okay, so how are these two tires on the road? Well, these are all-terrain tires, primarily designed for trucks and SUVs. So I'm gonna have to recalibrate my normal brain because normally I'm thinking about steering reaction and handling and things like that. And Really, I think for these tires, noise and comfort is probably higher on the priority list than outright performance. Obviously, they're for trucks. Now, if noise is your priority, the BF Goodridge does have the advantage by a small amount. It, in this vehicle, is probably not the best in the world for noise and comfort because of some of the exhaust modifications that someone made. However, at 40 miles an hour, 
On the Falcon, you can just about start to hear the tread pattern noise. Now, noise from a tire, there's sort of two types of noise. There's cavity noise, which is the sound resonating inside the wheel and tire combination. But the one you hear more is tread pattern noise, and that's the air being pumped through the tread pattern and out of the tire. And that's that kind of you hear on highways and things like that. Now, an all-terrain tire obviously has a lot of tread pattern, but it seems like BF Goodridge with their new tread pattern design, I'm not sure if they're expelling more of the noise out to the side, which would make it quieter internally, but it is certainly ever so slightly quieter than the Falcon at 40, 45, 50. And I'm lucky where I live, I live in Salt Lake City, where there's various different types of road services. And pretty much across all of the services, the BF Goodridge does have an advantage. Once you get to about 75 miles an hour on concrete, Honestly, the noise levels start to even out, but then there's also the drone of the engine and the exhaust of this vehicle. Comfort, again, is slightly in the BF Goodridge's favor. Both of these are LT. They're both multiple ply heavy duty tires. So comfort probably isn't the top of their priority list, but the BF Goodridge on the smaller imperfections does, it just sort of rounds the bump a little bit more maturely. It just feels like a little bit more of a, a grown up comfort reaction. But again, they're both LT tires. So when you hit big stuff, I can't really tell much of the difference, especially with this off-road coilover suspension. As for the steering reaction of the tires, well, I know I said these aren't performance tires, but how the tire responds to steering inputs is both quite interesting and it does affect the quality of your life with the tire. Now the BF Goodridge, like off-road, had a bit more of a dead spot in the middle and it just took slightly longer to react once you started applying steering lock However, it did ramp up the steering reaction fairly quickly. So I wouldn't exactly call it super linear, which is something we look for in a performance tire, but it gave you this sort of nice quality of like ease of driving around center. But if you wanted it to react quickly, it could. The Falcon on the other hand, just reacted a little bit more quickly and perhaps a little bit more linear, linearly, linear, I, more in a more linear manner. Still wasn't like a performance tire or anything, but of the two, if I was going for a canyon drive in my can, I'd definitely take the Falcon. But I think having lived with both of the tires, like I've had the uh, Falcon on for a week, the BF Goodridge on for a week, I just think maybe the slightly bigger dead spot, which goes everything against my normal thoughts about a tire, works for its intent. Um, so on the road, I think the BF Goodridge does have a very, very small advantage, but like off-road, the, the differences I'm describing are incredibly small like I, i'm not sure my mum would jump in the car and be able to notice any differences between the two tires unless she listened incredibly carefully at 45 miles an hour and she knew exactly what she was listening for for the tread pattern noise so both these tires like off-road have been very good on road obviously i haven't been able to do things like wet grip because i'm in the middle of a utah summer and it's a thousand degrees and if rain fell from the sky everyone would be really confused um i had actually planned to be testing this week in alabama I'm um, doing some objective testing with a whole bunch of tires, the 84W, uh, BF Goodridge, Akumo, Akupo, Goodyear, a bigger comparison test where we do get the proper data because I'd be at a proving ground. However, ironically, weather, it was thundering all week in Alabama this week, so I haven't had a chance to do that. That will be coming up in the future, so subscribe for that if you want to see it. But for now, let's just go on and look at the final few bits about these tires we've not yet discussed. Okay, what's left to talk about? Well, first and foremost, I think price is very important for a lot of people. This is where the Falcon does have an advantage. I can't find the prices for the tires in this size because the BF Goodridge isn't out until next month. This was just a, an early release they sent to me. However, the Falcon in 275-7018 is about $15 a tire cheaper. So it's about $60 a set. Now that's not a huge amount of money, especially when these are tires are $320 each. However, the Falcon also has 60,000 warranted tread miles, whereas the BF Goodridge only has 50. So that means you have about 20% more warranted life out of the Falcon, which with the cheaper purchase price makes the Falcon a better value tire for sure. What else? Well, I haven't tested wet grip or snow grip. I will in the future, I promise, so subscribe if you wanna see it. However, Historically, the KO2 was the better tire in the snow than the 83W. So I expect the KO3 will hold this advantage in the snow. They're both three peak rated, so they're both severe snow rated, but I'm pretty confident that the BF Goodridge will be the better tire in the snow. 
However, conversely, again, I haven't tested wet, but historically the 83W was a fair bit better than the KO2 in the wet. And looking at the press releases, neither of them seem to have made vast improvements in the wet. So I'm assuming the 84W is gonna be better than the uh, KO3 in the wet. So it's snow better, wet better. It's also very close. It's like take here, give there, balance out here. So without the objective data, I guess you'll be watching this video, so okay, which is better? Well, I can't really tell you objectively which is better, but I can, having given some thought, tell you which tire I'm probably gonna keep on my vehicle. Now, I like to do this at the end of these subjective tests. I've got both sets of tires. I only need one of them, really. I don't do a huge amount of miles. So which tire am I gonna bolt on and just live with for the next six months or a year until I do another one of these tests? And it's been very, 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 very incredibly difficult to decide between these two. The Falcon, I think I just kind of like it a little bit more off-road, but I don't do a huge amount off-road. I prefer the BF Goodridge slightly on-road. I think the Comfort is a bit more, it's just a bit more mature, as I said, in the on-road section. The tread pattern of the Falcon I prefer, the sidewall of the BF Goodridge I prefer, although I do keep on going backwards and forwards. And I think ultimately it's gonna come down to as I'm not buying these and I'm not gonna wear through them before they replace, I think it's coming down to vanity and that is the BF Goodridge with the white sidewall on the outside. I just think it really looks better on my vehicle because I've got black, black, black and then this pop of white. So I personally will be keeping the BF Goodridge on. The benefits of the BF Goodridge for this climate are both the sidewall and uh, I'm in Salt Lake so I get a lot of snow. However, if I was living in a climate where it saw a lot of rain and maybe less snow, I'd probably swing in favor of the Falcon. But both these tires are absolute titans of their segment. And I think a lot of it is gonna come down to brand loyalty and to which you buy. But I think you'll be happy with either of them. The differences I've been describing throughout this video are incredibly small, but they are there. It's fascinating how two quite different looking tread patterns and designs and everything can impact things like noise and comfort and off-road like feedback and response and grip and things like that. Finally, I just need to say a thank you to Mantra for lending me eight of these wheels. They are a limited edition, as I said, fully forged lightweight wheel. Uh, so if you want to set, I'll be linking them in the description. I think they're great. Um, I really appreciated the weight during the test. They look cool and the fact they're 950 kilos per wheel, which is what, over 2,000 pounds of load rating per wheel. That's a lot of load rating for a wheel. And this is something you probably have to think about a lot more than people should. And am I putting the right wheel on for my off-road truck? Because a lot of these performance tuner, good looking wheels from brands you know, they're just not rated if you're gonna do any sort of serious off-roading. You can end up bending a wheel very easily. So check out Mantra. Let me know in the comments which of these two tires you're gonna fit next, or if you fitted one of them, let me know how you're finding it. I love to hear user feedback. There is a website behind everything called tirereviews.com. It's spelled T-I-R-E hyphen reviews.com if you're American. Um, that is basically powering the whole YouTube channel. So if you have some time, go hit that website, put a review of whatever tires you're running on. I wanna see it. Millions of people browse that website each month, trying to work out what tire is best for them so you can really help people. Um, again, thanks for watching and as always, safe motoring.